All right, so today I wanna to talk about sit and goes. And for those of you who don't know what a sit and go is, it's a, it's a tournament that's often single table, but it can be multiple tables. And basically there's a predefined number of seats. And once those seats fill up, you go, thus the sit and go. So let's say there's a nine player sit and go. As soon as you have nine players, you start playing. And you know, sit and goes, uh, to be honest, why, they, why I love them so much and why they are close to my heart, I'd say, is because I really learned how to play poker via um, sit and goes. And I really believe that they're amazing training, gra training grounds. I don't believe that they're actually poker. I believe that sit and goes are these like weird, hybrid, different uh, kind of game entirely because they can be beaten by understanding different dynamics. But I believe as a training, ga training ground, they're amazing. And especially if you're a beginner, sit and goes is something you should definitely play. And here's why. So the first thing is, is that a sit and go is very defined. The, you know, there's a certain structure, there's a certain amount of time, which usually isn't a lot. These usually happen very, very, very quickly. Um, you know how much money you're going to lose. You know how much money you're putting up, which for beginning players is very good, a good thing. I mean, like cash games, you could potentially lose a ton of money or win a ton of money, but it's not so defined. And, and when you have that definition, you have that construct of how much I can make and how much I can lose, a lot of players, beginning players at least, feel it, it's easier to play. Um, the second thing is sit and goes pr provide you with a level of experience that you really can't get anywhere else. So when you're playing a sit and go, you're playing a full table, uh, you know, a, a final table essentially, which is something that if you go on to play tournaments, a lot of players suck at final tables because they don't have any experience actually playing them. Sit and goes allow you this experience to sit at a single table and have it, um, have people knocked out and kind of represents what it would be like in an actual, uh, maybe large event or big tournament. The second thing is it allows you to play with, kind of similar to the first, but it allows you to play with different um, a different number of opponents. So you, you start off as a, at a full ring and then all of a sudden nine and seven and eight and six and five and four and three and two one. And it basically, most people don't have this level of experience with heads up or playing three-handed or four-handed or five-handed. Sit and goes allow you to experience that. Although they are different, right? So sit and go, um, with five players is different than like a cash game if you're playing five-handed, right? It's it completely different, but it still gives you a, a level of experience to that. Also, you know, they're just significantly easier to beat than cash games. Um, I think over the long run, I think I could teach like a player who doesn't really know that much about a game to kind of, you know, play a, a simple style in sit and goes. And the reason why they're easier is in sit and goes, there's often a very predefined way of playing them, right? So there's certain, in cash games, there's certain things that are right and there's certain things that are wrong, but there's a lot of shades of gray. Like I took this line because, you know, I, I thought it would make sense and I think I can get value over the long run. And you can make arguments for certain things. For sit and goes, it's like, no, that's wrong. Like what you did is wrong. You should have shoved in that spot or you should have folded in that spot or you shouldn't have opened it all in that spot. And because you have such, uh, you don't have that many chips that you have to, often and the structure is often so bad, you have to play a specific style or a specific way. And this really helps you build that initial um, restraint or that initial uh, discipline to not make stupid mistakes. And I think this is really, really important for beginning players. Uh, and also, just so you know, like in terms of books on sit and goes, I know I'm going off in tangents, but I definitely really like um, uh, Kill Phil and Kill Everyone by Nam Lee, I think. Kill Everyone's a really good overview of a sit and go and how I should uh, play it. It's probably one of my more recommended books. I'll probably do another video about that book uh, itself. Um, yeah, and also there's one thing about sit and goes. One more, one last thing that I love. It really smacks you in the face with the variance of poker because you're going to go through so many of these like 50-50s and you know 60-40s and and it really gets you to experience how everything the beautiful world of poker. So, for example, like I used to play, um, when I used to play online, I mean, at the end of the day, I probably lost more money. I definitely lost more money online than I and than I won, but I learned how to play poker online, right? Like, especially when I was much younger, like 20s, and I, I you know, I, I played tons of sit and goes. And I remember the cool thing is when you're multi-tabling sit and goes and you're playing like, let's say, I used to play around 12 tables at once. So you have 12 tables, uh, uh, six on each screen and you'd be like click 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 you see the zen aspect of poker right so it's like you go all in with ace jack someone calls you with ace king that flop comes jack three six five two and you win 
right? And then on another table, you know, you go all in with pocket aces and somebody calls you with do seven offsuit and then the board comes seven, seven, two. Like you start to see when you're playing such high volume and you're playing so much, you, ha you start to see that everything kind of evens out in terms of the distribution of how things are going to go. And I always thought that was a very, uh, I mean, at that time I would go nuts when I would lose, of course, but as I got older and I started to see it, I was like, wow, this is kind of actually beautiful, like how the, the math really falls, it's, falls in place in a, in a sit and go. And I think you could realize that you could see those things more clearly in a sit and go because you're usually not, you're not, you don't have that many, you know, fifth, hopefully you don't have that many, you know, coin tosses when you're playing cash games. Like you don't have that because you're not just shoving all in pre and you're not doing the same things that you need to do in a sit and go. So I really believe for those of you who are, you know, starting off in the game or, um, you know, yeah, starting off, I think sit and goes are a really good place to start for the reasons I mentioned. There's probably more. Um, but they can be, when you grind them, they could be a tricky and they could give you, uh, they can make you a little bit crazy sometimes because you literally, you might be playing an hour and then all of a sudden you have to do something and someone else calls and then it's like, all right, 50-50, I hope I win. And it, you'll, you'll get a lot of those situations. But if you could learn how to push and shove, I'm sorry, push and fold and, you know, open fold and do all the tricky things that you need to do in in sit and goes, you could become a com pretty accomplished uh, sit and go player and really understand your win rate and understand your in the money rating and all these different factors. Maybe I'll do a series on sit and goes. I think that's what I'll do. This will be uh, the part one of a series. I love my series. Anyway, it's about it. Um, any questions or comments about sit and goes below? Let me know. Schoolcards.com/slash/sign up. Have a good one.